Hey everyone, before we start this episode, I just want to give a quick heads up that as soon as we finished the episode, we took a look and for whatever reason, our guest video did not save. The audio is still crystal clear and good to go, but since I'd say 80% of the video is just me and Stratus talking for video, we figured that we'd put us in the bottom right corner and the rest of the interview is going to have gameplay footage of the first hour of Medieval Dynasty. So with that being said, I hope despite the video hiccups, that you're still able to enjoy this interview. Take care. Welcome to another episode of Rough Talk VR, a weekly podcast with in-depth game reviews, exclusive developer interviews, and the latest MetaQuest and virtual reality news. We join our hosts, the father-son team of D. Scruffles and Stratus today, as they spend another episode breaking down and discussing the world of virtual reality. Hey, welcome to this episode of Rough Talk VR. Today we have one that I'm so excited for. It's a special one. Yeah, we have two people from Spectral Games, the developers of Medieval Dynasty New Settlement, a game that we were so excited for the moment it was it was announced. It's a game that you played a whole bunch, flat screen when it came out. I played it on beta on flat screen. Yeah, talked and, my... And wanted it in VR back then. Talked I, my ear off about <laughs> it for probably like a month straight. So I'm, I'm hyped for this one. Today we're joined with Paul, the CEO and Greg, the the lead developer. So I don't think there's two better people that we could have on to talk about this game. But before I get carried away fanboying and, and stuff like that, Paul and Greg, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit more for our listeners? Tell them a bit about who you are and what you do over at Spectral Games. Yeah, hi, my name is Paul Sobik. I'm the CEO of Spectral Games. I'm doing uh, business development and business relations with platform holders, and I'm trying my best uh, to keep the team happy. <laughs> uh, my name is Grzegorz Wojcik. I'm lead developer here at Spectral Games. Uh, and yeah, I'm I'm leading the project from the technical side. Awesome. And is this both of your guys' first game developing in VR or in general Spectral Games' first game at all? It, it's uh, Spectral Games' first game as a uh, team. And uh, earlier... Both of us, we work at Incubo uh, by Green Hell VR. Oh, <laughs> that's a game that both of us loved as well. I never actually played the flat screen version of Green Hell, but we had a blast with it in VR. Oh my God, dude. Not even funny. So, I mean, at what point did you leave and make your own team for for this game? Uh, the, the story was so that uh, I was assistant to the management board at Incubon, the developers of Greenfield BR, mm, and they acquired Spectral Game as a team, and they acquired the full team of developers into Incubon. So the company was there without any team, and one of the Chanel holders said, so maybe we could get the IP for Medieval Dynasty. Uh, and we got to meet uh, the developers of the flat screen game, so Render Cube, and their publisher Toplitz. Uh, and we've got really great connection. And they said, "Okay, let's do it. Bring it to VR. We're gonna trust you guys." And I uh, built the team for doing that. The our ways with Incubo parted, and I built the team. Uh, of independent developers and the developers of the uh, game Medieval Dynasty are our shareholders right now. So they believe in the team and the project itself. So I, I got to know, because like I've been following flat screen of this when it was in beta. How long ago? I mean, did you make this decision when it was in beta or i because it seems yes. like there's no way you waited for it to come out to their release and then just boom pump this out <laughs> no we started talking with them it was beginning so like january or february 2021 and we got the ip in april 2021 and i needed a few months to get the core of the team and we started develop the development process in october 2021 Wow. That's incredible. So about two and a half years, this game was in development. That's cr that's correct. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's that's a wild studio story. That's not the typical well, story it's crazy that we hear. To me, it means somebody played it, and when we could do this in VR, and then did it. 
Mm-hmm. But it just it's yeah. amazing because the <laughs> the amount of time we're talking here is not a lot of time to take a game that was still in in my head it was still probably beta in twenty one, right? Yeah. So I exactly. mean, that's incredible. So you had the foresight to see that this is gonna this could be something special, and let alone on standalone, which is mind boggling. Yeah, standalone it, VR. But yeah. had you all played the flat screen version before? And Kuvo was like. You know, I think we can do this. Uh, yeah, we were fans of the flat screen game. We played it since the early access and we loved the game. I mean, when you take every genre that makes in Medieval Dynasty as itself, so the game, it would be nothing special. But Render Cube managed to mix it so well. Uh, that it tastes perfect. It's a really, really great game, and the time flies while playing it. So yeah, it, it, well, we we were so happy when we got the IP and the possibility to make a VR version of it. So we, you, you 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 even don't imagine. And you know, it's a spinoff, so it's not a one to one of the original no, black it's, game. It's pretty close, though, dude. At what point in the development was that the idea? Was that the idea from the get-go, or was there a certain point where you're like, well, we need to make deviations of a different campaign, etc.? Uh, it was our starting point with uh, the discussion with RenderCube and Tablets. We didn't want to make a port one-on-one. Uh, we thought about spin from the beginning. First of all, uh, Medieval Dynasty is so a big game. It's, I think it's impossible to bring it one-on-one uh to the standalone headset and second of all we want to be fair for the play to the players so uh, why should they pay another money to play the same game but on vr this time uh, we what we thought and that was like a cornerstone of our studio we want to make spin-offs to great ips because we think vr needs great ips but told in different way And was that a lesson that you would say was learned from Green Hell VR? Or is that just because of the the vast scope of Medieval Dynasty? Uh, It was what was in our minds from the beginning. So Medieval Dynasty was totally separate case. So like in Kuvo was talking in Green Hell, there was not an option to make a spin-off or something like that. They need to make a port. And we wanted to make a spin-off from the beginning and render cube loved the idea. They said it would be something great. It would be uh, 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 additional story uh, to the medieval dynasty universe. And they thought, yeah, we should go this way as well. Well, here's the crazy part, guys. <laughs> if it was a one-to-one, I'd still, I'd still get it totally you know without hesitation and and shamefully might actually say i'd probably play it more in vr than i would on flat screen so for well, both parties and <laughs> for both parties involved it's probably good it's not a one for one because yeah. mm-hmm. now you can still play it flat screen and then enjoy the the vr version as well but you still would have gotten my money either way <laughs> and, <laughs> and how many Great. people how many people worked on this game was it just Poor Greg by himself chipping away. <laughs> a vast project. One, man, one man army. No, <laughs> uh, at the beginning we were a free spectral game, so we started the development process from scratch, like with three persons. Uh, then, from like sixty percent of the development process, there was eight of us, and now we are thirteen people. Damn. So the team's growing. Yeah, it's growing. Yeah. And, and hopefully we grow a little bit more because we've got a <laughs> lot, lot of ideas. Uh, but the day is too short to bring them all into the game. So <laughs> maybe we will need some, some help. Yeah. I still want to talk about Medieval Dynasty, but knowing that you're going to specialize in this ability to bring good IPs over, are you already discussing the next one you plan on bringing over? Without having yeah. to say what it is, I don't want to... Yeah, we have such such discussions. We are discussing right now three IPs. The negotiations are at different stages, so we don't know which one we'll get. 
we have a priority on one of them. I think that will be something what's not even right now on VR. So it will be, I, will, I think it will be really cool to bring it to, to VR. Yeah. Oh man. I love I, this I just, model. I just wanted to know that there was more. Granted, I know we'll, we'll focus more on medieval now. But no, that, but it it's just good to know. made me happy to know that. Yeah, because when, when a team's talented at what they do, you want them to, you know, we want more. We're greedy. We're consumers. So. <laughs> Correct. The results speak for themselves absolutely on that. It's like, well, you've already seen how good it can be with Medieval Dynasty. And here's the thing. The game was, has been out for, what, a week? We've already had yep. a hot fix. A whole bunch of, of fixes come in it. Mm -hmm. And you all just put out a roadmap of yeah. future content. In case anybody missed... Uh, that post on your Discord server or on social media. Do you want to talk a little bit about what's coming soon in that roadmap? Yeah, I guess I can talk about that. Um, basically, in our roadmap, we have stated the upcoming months of our development. Uh, of course, as an early, early release, the the our the, the biggest pri priority we will uh, put onto patching the game, or fixing and making the game experience stable and as we designed. Because our team is so so little that of course some mistakes have slipped on the release, but we are doing our best to to keep it the best for the players. Uh, then afterwards, uh, we have planned a feature that feature a patch that many players have wanted, uh, and that is the visual updates for the game. Some of them both for Quest Two and uh, some of them only to Quest Three and Quest Pro. Uh, right after that, we have. Uh, beekeeping patch and uh, crossbow patch with some of the additional features that don't uh, didn't make a place uh, to the um, part of the roadmap. But of course, the the four stages of the roadmap are not everything that we will do throughout the development. Those things are only those that we are sure that we will make as a development team. But throughout the the upcoming months of the development, we plan to listen to our community and do things that players would want. So we can't really say that in the roadmap, roadmap itself. And of course, besides that, we uh, are working consistently on, on the co-op right now. Uh, and we will continue to uh, throughout the upcoming months. Yeah. 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 Well, what's worth mentioning is that the roadmap is not for a longer period of time, like 12 miles. It's just for the upcoming month because... When we are planning something, we want to share the information, what we can deliver and deliver it to the, to the players. Uh, we don't know uh, what could we bring like in terms of 12 months. So it's always fair to uh, talk about what you can deliver and that's what we're doing. So yeah, obviously no hard dates or something. Yeah, but my the, one, I'm trying to clarify in my head what I'm... So this is something we can expect, you know, in a few months or six months or something like that. It's not going to be like all throughout the, the whole year. Yeah, it's something like six, maybe seven months. We are doing our best. We are a small team, but uh, that's the time period we had in our heads. But yeah, not not longer. That gets me excited because selfishly, as a, as a fan of the game, yeah... yeah. Co-op in this game is would be something else. I'm 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 already feeling it as I'm scavenging items, bringing them back to my house, building new things. I'm like, man, if me and him could do this together, mm -hmm. it would be a problem. Yeah, I don't think I would play any other games for quite a bit. It it it's I, already a time-consuming game for yeah. us. So <laughs> to yeah, add co-op is just gonna next level it for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's just notice that on the roadmap, the co-op is at the bottom. And it doesn't end in the short term period that's on the road. So we are doing our best to bring it as fast as we can, but we want to be sure that it will be uh, just as good as the single player game that we released last week. That makes sense. And is it something that you all have tested internally at all, or is it just too many, too many other things going on right now? Release was just last week, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the co-op is in er, very early stages, so that's, I think, everything that we can say. But uh, I can assure you guys that when we first made the prototype of the co-op experience, we were, like, sitting at the spawn point for 20 minutes and throwing sticks to each other, and we had hell of a fun. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I hope this will be something big. 
Uh, the game just feels built if for you, it. If you need testers yeah. for this one, we'll, we'll, apply. <laughs> we'll yeah. remember about you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it just feels so mm-hmm. so built for it. And what's the vision for that? Is it going to be kind of like the the idea that kind of like the sandbox mode? Just do it with a buddy. You, you guys are building the same dynasty together. Or are you each working on separate dynasties just in your your own in your neighborhood? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the nothing is put in put in stone right now, but we are very close to making the sandbox experience without with a buddy by your side, uh, right now. But of course, uh, we will look throughout the development in further months. Maybe we will do everything. Maybe it will be just a sandbox. We can't really tell. Uh, yeah, we will see what the future brings for that. Yeah, I'm I excited. Just, I selfishly love the direction of this roadmap, mm-hmm. and it's like. Truthfully, if you chose not to invest the time to make it co-op, it's still a great freaking game. It's mm-hmm. just, it would just be a, a selfish wish of, oh man, it would be cool if you could play this with somebody and both work on the same objective. And Correct. If, if no more content came to the game, it was only bug fixes, right. and then it was moved on. The game it's is perfect. complete. It's, it's a good. great game. <laughs> Everything <laughs> else is just the, the cherry on top, me being a selfish consumer, consumer yeah. of being like co-op, 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 and... Crossbow sounds pretty epic, too. I, I can't lie. Yeah, yeah. Make killing those bears a lot easier. That was my first yeah. death in the game. Was being thinking a, you could take out the bear. Yeah. Did you throw a rock at it? No, I tried to fight <laughs> it with a stone axe, and yeah, I got no. molly Dude, it's a bear. I know. I just <laughs> got to learn the, the lesson the hard way. Survival yeah. is real. So with the yeah. game out for like a, about a week now, what's the reception been like? Like in in your Discord, just from what you're hearing in the reviews. Yeah, pr- first of all, the reviews are really, really positive. We know that, and yeah, everyone can notice that maybe the graphics are not the strongest side of the of the game, but we need to remember that it's going on uh, and is optimized for Quest 2 standalone headset. So it's the most selling headset, so the most popular headset in the world. And we need to make sure that uh, every owner of Quest 2 could play this game. Uh, but every positive review was mentioning that they are having fun playing this game. So it was making us so happy, really. <laughs> we were all smiling and, and jumping from happiness. And on the our Discord server, yeah, we've got a living community. We are there every day and we are talking with the community. We are hearing their ideas and we try to help with some problems or bugs. We are just listening to the community there. Makes sense. Makes sense. And I think that this is a great example for for people to hear. I mean, look, the game started in development, what, October 2021? Mm -hmm. The Quest 3 came out six months ago. I mean, I imagine you're pretty far late into the development cycle. Yeah, but by the time the the Quest Three even is an option, I imagine you don't get it till release at the earliest. So it's well, it should be noted the graphics to me look they're they're not bad graphics. No, it they wasn't my good. complaint yeah. at all. So yeah. I mean to know that, yep. and and I agree. You know, you need to cater to the mass, the most massive <laughs> market. Yeah, before you can cater to the you know what eventually will catch up, but for now is not you know the Quest Threes, Quest Pros. But it's, if it's on the roadmap, you're actually going to do a visual enhancement for the Quest yeah. 3 and Pro. It's it, I'm 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 good. But I I wasn't upset about the graphics at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and great I'm on that a, you and mentioned I'm on a it. Three. Yeah. Great that you mentioned it because what we think is when you have the headset on your head, the graphics are much better than you can see on the screens or in the video the reviewers are taking. So. Uh, yeah, every player should check it on their own. Mm-hmm. I agree with that a, a hundred yeah, percent. Nothing in me went, and when we talked about it when we were playing it, I was neither one of us were like, "Oh, the graphics are jank." No, it looked mm-hmm. freaking good. I'm in this world, man. I got shit to do. And in list of priorities, I'd rather a strong core gameplay loop than pretty flashy <laughs> high a lot resolution. Of going on. Yeah. High resolution rocks that I'm just going to scoop up in a second anyway. Scoop, 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 <laughs> scoop, 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 scoop. So, I think you guys all did it. Did it good. It's like the polish comes, and it's again, like I said, it's not like the Quest Three existed the moment you guys started mm-hmm. working on the game either. It's like it comes out at the end of the development cycle. It's and this is an aggressive studio, in my opinion. 
yeah. to pull off what you pulled off. It, and it's just weird because I don't have any examples of like games that came to VR that were pretty much being developed at the same time mm -hmm. from different, totally different studios. It's like, I don't know. I, I got to give you guys a lot of credit. And and honestly, thank you, you, made, thank you. <laughs> you made one of my flat screen experiences better because now I can play it in VR. It's mm -hmm. like this was huge for me. And I know the thank flat you. screen version just recently got co-op as well. So it's like how much creative freedom do you guys have? Are, are you restricted to only things that exist in the, the base game as well? Or could you kind of have some fun like adding Ooh. things like weapons that don't exist in the base game, etc.? We have uh, totally freedom, and that's because uh, the Render Cube trusts us. Uh, they trusted us from the beginning. Uh, we, I can say that really, that we are true friends. I mean, Spectral Games and Render Cube are two befriended studios. They help us in every possible way. Uh, we were talking a lot with them about our ideas. They never said no. They just said, well, let's try it, do it, and we will see. Uh, and they never said, don't, don't, don't do it, you can't do it. They were always open-minded and they trusted us that uh, their IP is in their best hands for the VR in our hands. So it was a really great, great process. I'll, I'll assume they've played it during this development. How, how has their feedback been internally? To your team uh, the feedback was really really great uh, what they said and we implemented it so they said that the first map that we prepared for the game was hell too big so we've got it a bit smaller <laughs> because they said they, that uh, yeah, the, the, they get a bit tired walking uh, around the bigger map because uh, the map that was the earlier was uh, a point bigger than it's now. Now we've got quite big map with a lot of points of interest, um, but it, it's changed during the development process. Mm, and they gave the feedback about mechanics, about the feeling. Mm, and we just need to remember that they are not the VR players and they trusted us okay. in bringing it to the VR language. Uh, and they just gave the feelings of what they have during the play test. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's a fantastic relationship. And I probably should know this, but is, is RenderCube, are they a Polish studio as well? Yes, they are a Polish studio from Łódź. That's awesome. So that's cool to see that they're they're supporting their fellow fellow countrymen, you know, giving the <laughs> the, the new studio a shot on this. That's a hell of a hell of a product to put out as like technically a first group. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like there's a lot on the table with that. Um, in depthness, this might be one of the most, if not the most, in depth game currently on the official Quest store. When you look at everything going on, the crafting, the combat, the I might not disagree with that. The the workers, the dynasty building, the interactions, I mean, the inner. Yeah, give me a number two for in depth, like RPG style. It's not even. There's not a number two. I, I mean, you think, guys have no. really raised the bar on this, so it's not a it's not a simple project to go on to for your first right, one, no. and and you all crushed it. it yeah, very, very risky. We know. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. I can assure you guys. <laughs> well, what what were some of the biggest challenges in the development of this? Um, making an open, truly really open world game where you are in the middle of the map and you can rotate in random direction and you will see a, a whole world be, be before you. That was something that wasn't really made or if it was made, that the world was kind of empty. So we didn't want to make our world uh, feel like that. Like you see an empty terrain, some rocks, some like points of interest and that's it. We wanted to make sure that we have a, um, a foliage the, the the whole horizon is filled with foliage and you can interact with everything you see. You can cut every single tree in our game. You can pick up any object that is lying on the ground and maintaining it with 72 FPS on the Quest 2 was a miracle, but yeah, we have done that. So yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. 
We just didn't know that's imp that's it's impossible, so we did it. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. That's the, everyone was talking like it's not possible. <laughs> yeah, and then we said like we will do it. <laughs> uh, sometimes they say ignorance is bliss, and it's true. Exactly. You know? yeah. <laughs> In this case, it's true. <laughs> I just think it's an amazing undertaking again, and and trust in. Mm -hmm. In in the studio for having faith that I, it just that's that's some, I don't know what to say it, to me it's just a, a rare rare story to come out with yeah. and and you're pulling it off so I had never thought of it like this before but now I'm kind of sold that maybe spinoffs are are a good direction to go for ports because you're not restricted to doing everything no. exactly no, the same I agree I think that this was that was a, a great decision and. You know, there's the both the sandbox and the adventure mode, which the adventure mode has a, a great story to it. That's what I'm personally doing right now, going through it. Kind of teaches you the game as you play it. How long would you say the the quest line is start to finish? The main quest or the whole quest with side quest? Uh, I like the the adventure mode main quest, I guess, because side quest, there's a lot of them. Even where I'm at right now, I'm seeing like <laughs> Six little exclamation points all over my the the white exclamation points with the side quest. So I imagine with side quest, there's a, a whole bunch. So maybe that'll be the follow up, but just the main quest alone. I think I could say like if you would rush the main story very quickly, it would be fifteen to twenty hours, something like that. I guess yeah. If you don't know what how how the game works and you don't know where stuff is, yeah, I would say it's something around that. Uh, I can say. Looking uh, on our Discord, uh, how many hours uh, our players have, I have seen multiple people having 30 hours plus without even completing the main story. So I think in our game, uh, for players that our game is a target of, 100 hours is something easily reachable. And now once you add in that <laughs> co-op too, it's, it's yeah. a whole different oh, no, story it's too. It's going to be 10,000 hours. Well, even me last night, I was putting in, I was chipping away at the story, chipping away at the story, and then I opened up my crafting book, and I'm like, damn, I have so much buildings I need to build at my compound. So then I went and dumped a whole hour not advancing the story, just chopping down trees, getting logs, building my resource house, building my hunting house, my, my hunting building. I was like, damn. So yeah, I can easily see the 100 hours being hit, especially for somebody that like, that they're micromanaging. They really want to get in depth with their. You know what my thing is? What's that? I <laughs> even if, I, if there's a quest to do or whatever, I'll just focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. So I might go in there and just start. Yeah. With, I'm just gonna gather and a hundred logs, dude. You have no idea. And I, I did the same thing in the flat screen. So it's like I can kill. I'm I'm definitely gonna exceed a hundred hours. Yeah. By the time I ever finish, because I'm just living my life in there mm -hmm. to me the quests are like even though i could just do sandbox all day yeah but i i enjoy the like it's my dude you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and when the end sorry yeah, going? And, yeah you can uh, think even about the calories burned chopping down wood and making planks that is uh, a truly workout in our game so yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was me last night just chopping down logs i got like 60 logs then i was like all right i'll make 20 planks i'm just sitting there just grinding the thing across <laughs> you know it's it's fun. It, it's definitely more, and, and, and this is not taking away from flat screen because anyone who's heard us talk knows mm -hmm. I love the flat screen. But to me, it adds that more real effect to it because I'm, I'm not pressing buttons more or less to make it do it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm there. I'm the guy. You're chopping down the tree. I'm chopping down a tree. I'm hunting. I'm pulling reeds. I'm, I'm making new tools. Skinning the, <laughs> skinning the animal, you know. I'm deciding where I want to, <laughs> exactly, you know, I'm, I'm the survival guy there. So, and let's say somebody hops into adventure mode. When that's all done, does it pretty much just become like the sandbox mode is? Yeah, the, the adventure mode in our minds is a prolonged tutorial that paces you every single mechanic in our game in a slow pace so we don't feel overwhelmed because we know some players like the, the feeling of uh, holding hand in, in, in the game, like the single player experience. And we know that there are players that would like to be in the center of the world with everything unlocked and see how much content you have to, to explore. So we have both of those to satisfy both type of players. So yeah, if you finish the main story, you have almost every recipe unlocked. So we can just do whatever you wish after that. As a testament 
to how feature rich and in depth this game is. <laughs> the the hold your hand tutorial is a fifteen to twenty hour plus yes. line of introducing <laughs> features yeah. and and teaching you the game. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. I don't think many games can say that they have that much. And honestly, no, oh, dude. I didn't play the flash screen version, you know, like he did. So I felt like I should really go into the adventure modes for the sake of, of learning. Whereas you, you went right into the sandbox. You're like, Pah, picking up where I left off on, <laughs> on the flash screen. So uh, that's great. Myself personally, for new players who've never played anything in the series, I would recommend go into that adventure mode. It's a great quest line. It's fun. Good kind story. Feel like you earn your place in society. You know, it's it's a uh... gotta mingle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love the the wave interaction too. That's yeah, that's yeah. a fun one. Uh, so kind of on that for new players who who are gonna hop into Medieval Dynasty New Settlement. Do you guys have any tips for them? Mm, just be yourself. Do whatever you want. Play the game how you want. You can do the quest. You can hunt. You can just try to survive. You can just go through the map. You have totally freedom of how you play and what you do. And just players should just remember about it and just have fun. And take your time. Don't rush it. <laughs> There's <laughs> yeah. a lot of things to do. Yeah. And approach it like real life. Are you going to fight a bear in real life like I, I tried to do? With a stick and a rock? Yeah, probably no. not. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. It and... doesn't sound safe, so no. <laughs> And and how much are you guys in the Discord listening to to feedback of players? I mean, I, I asked because right away on the hot fix, I actually left off on my save before you did the update on the throwing mission with the spear. <laughs> yeah, and then I do the hot fix. I notice a little note about it in the bug fixes, and I go in and there's a a much more in depth diagram teaching you how to actually throw the spears and stuff. So, how much are the player feedback dictating your direction with the updates? Well, I think uh, since the release, I don't know if I had, except the sleeping, I don't know if I had an hour break from the Discord. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I and uh, I believe like I have helped one of you guys with some uh, quest line that you had troubles. Yeah, Bandor, uh, that sneaky, yeah, yeah, that sneaky yeah, bastard. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah, so I'm literally lit, sit, sitting on our Discord day and, day and night. I'm uh, looking at the game suggestions and bug fixes and trying to help people out. Uh, and yeah, I have just today made a list of uh, the most rated game suggestions from the players. I have pasted that in our internal office Discord, and we will look around what we can do and what some of the of other things are already planned in the future. Uh, so we know what players want the most right now. And yeah, we are working on it. And apparently sleep is not something you favor <laughs> yeah. in your life. All right. That's <laughs> not, man. Yeah, that's, uh, I am a man of commitment and sheer <laughs> will, I could say. Yeah. <laughs> well, it seems like, because I was in the Discord a little bit pre-launch and then the game launched and it seems like it's picking up in player count and activity quite a bit. Yeah. Is that just perception or is the, the thing blowing up a bit? Yeah, it's growing. It's, yeah, it's growing. Yeah, right now we have uh, one thousand and three hundred people on the Discord. Wow, I feel like it was just a couple hundred when I yeah, hopped in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it is this what you all expected, or is it kind of surpassing your expectations? With mm, people I was sure your... that yeah, I was sure that after the launch, many people would hop in, hop in because we know that there are players that don't like to spend. I don't know, like 10 hours and exploring the map. Some of them just wants to get spoilers of things. <laughs> some of them will be get stuck on some quest lines or, or whatever they would like to get help on. We have seen that many people like to help each other. And that is something that is really heartwarming when I look at it. Uh, so yeah, that was obvious that after the launch, the, the Discord would be bigger. And yeah, I hope it, it keeps growing. Yeah, the game's made for you know it's like the first vr game that that has a need for those old school guides you know people used to always yeah. google they'd be like the wiki of pages with, wait until yeah. break down wait until co-op yeah. there's gonna be, be people yeah. in discord that are gonna take new players like, you know, <laughs> yeah I'll teach you're, you you're, the game yep i'll teach you every step yeah. of the way your hired yeah. tour guide it's yeah. still rock i mean it's got a, a 4.6 which is pretty good oh that's incredible which is really good how many reviews right now does it say uh 410 ratings 274 reviews 
Wow, that's great. And I'll, I highly recommend anybody that's played the game, go drop it a, a, re, a story review that, that makes such a big impact for the developers. And it's so new, though. Also, go join it's your guys. It's getting better. Dude. I know. Go join the Discord, too, because you all crush it with community engagement. You know, Greg, you said it yourself. You're in there day yes. and night <laughs> reading stuff. You know, you guys have a great section for for bug posts. You all are responsive. Seems like the community is non-toxic. It's growing quick, so highly recommend it. But you guys are also doing how-to videos on your YouTube channel. Is that right? Like little... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice. We, we do, do those videos on some of the mechanics. That yeah, that was a big challenge in our game because our game is so complicated. It has so uh, so many mechanics that we knew that we couldn't make like the wall of text behind <laughs> before the player explaining every single thing. So designing uh, every mechanic to be intuitive was our core design pillar, and that was a real challenge to to I can say change every single mechanic to be like oh. Let's try if I can do that without even reading any encyclopedia or like tutorials or anything. We try to make sure that um, some of our, uh, most of our mechanics are intuitive as much as possible. Uh, so yeah, that was it. And so for some of the, of the mechanics that we know that are complicated, like the farming system or skinning, hunting, building, etc., we have made some uh, tutorials that we will continue to on our channel. Uh, and as well as our, some of our players are doing them as well. So we are also thankful for that. Yeah, I would think for a creator standpoint, I mean, this you're handing people a gold mine. Yeah, you of how 100 to's. hours of content, dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, for real. And that's not even with stretching it out. Mm-hmm. It's a, contator, a creator's dream, really. Yeah. Little hidden yeah, we, side quest that yeah. somebody could miss. I could see a bunch of videos and guides and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Our target, our target, target mission was to give players tools that they can choose from and play however they want. They can be whoever they want, and they can choose whatever they use for the game, gameplay experience. Uh, yeah, that was what we have tried to do throughout the whole development. I think it it worked out pretty well, and we will continue to to, to develop it and um, grow it further into the more content, etc. For you guys, since you get to play however you want in a game like this, how do you all like to play? Do you focus more on building your dynasty, uh, doing quests, just gathering resources? What's your ideal play session? Yeah, I think I would like build every single building I have unlocked. I don't like <laughs> those, those those red uh, red dots on on a guidebook <laughs> on the nasty book that tells you that you have a new recipe unlocked. I always need to <laughs> click that off. So when I click that off, I almost every time build it. Uh, then I try to automate every single thing I have in my village. So workers are firing up and then I just go hunting all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's me. And I'm going just through the map, hunting, gathering resources and uh, playing with uh, building and crafting. I don't build my dynasty. I've got my dynasty at home. I've got 12 year old <laughs> son. So. <laughs> So I want to try something else. <laughs> well, I think that's what's awesome is that everybody's going to be playing this game for different reasons. You know, some people are going to be looking more for that hunting and gathering experience. Some people are going to be wanting to do that kind of like virtual sims. They're going to be wanting to have the the dynasty. Other people, it's going to be, no, I want to I want to hunt. I want to live, live like a hunter-gatherer mm-hmm. right now. And you, you kind of get to feed to all of those different people. This is exactly the type of game that I wish existed in VR right from the day when I got my headset. VR, yeah. Yeah. But for some people, tomorrow it will be the first Correct. game that they and, get for which is mind blowing to me that Quest Two is one ninety nine <laughs> right now. So for a buck ninety nine, yeah. you get this experience is incredible. Mm-hmm. Incredible in VR. I'm but, just still oof. amazed that the it's it was pulled off like it was. I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. Uh, I'm amazed that there's already a roadmap of more content mm-hmm. coming. Because like we said before, if, if it was closed off, this game is is phenomenal. It's going to be one of the best releases of 2024. Uh, yeah, I, I'd agree with that. And to hear all the stuff that's that's planned to come within the next, you know, six, seven months. It's props aggressive. to you all. <laughs> I mean, I can't wait to see what's next from the studio. Well, I love the integrity too of of saying flat out that we're not going to say we're going to do something unless we're ha- already know we can mm-hmm. do it. 
So there's no false promises here. There's no allusion to anything being mentioned. It's like, as a team, if somebody says it, as consumers, we know it's coming. It's, it's, yeah. There's no like, this is a make believe roadmap. So we also, yeah, we also wanted to make sure that uh, we will listen to what the players will want. So we didn't want to put in the roadmap, in the roadmap, like we will do. I don't know, another quest chain for 20 hours of gameplay one year ahead because players might not want that. So we may not just do that. Instead, we can do something that players want. Uh, so yeah, we wanted to, to, to do this this way. Yeah, and our, in our heads, the released game is just the core of what we think about Medieval Dynasty. We've got really a lot of ideas. What can we bring to the game at the show? Like be like crossbows, maybe something else in the future. We are listening also to the to the players, what the players want. Uh, we have a list of that. Yeah. And, yeah. And we will work on some uh, points from the list. Yeah. If, if I could. Yeah, yeah. If I could write down on a, a notepad every single idea we had and just put it up here, I think it would just <laughs> go through the base floor and I don't know where it would stop. <laughs> So yeah, we have a lot of things planned uh, and we targ- we we want to make the medieval dynasty of a long seller. So we we have a lot of things be- before us to, to to add. Yeah, it's just the beginning. So if the player will love our game and we get the possibility to build it up, we're going to do that. And well, I'm sure too, every person that joins the Discord, like me, I play, I go, oh, co-op, co-op. For every person screaming co-op, there's somebody else screaming, I don't know, war or or whatever feature. So I'm sure every person that joins the Discord has their oh, I could their make, list. Of, I could make a selfish list, yeah. no problem. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> so please do and bring it to our <laughs> Discord. <laughs> yeah. I, I again for anybody listening, if if you're curious about the game or you're already playing it, for one, drop them a five star review on the store mm-hmm. and go join that Discord. Go follow them on social media and their YouTube because this is a studio. I I I wrote down it. it's on the watch list. Yeah. yeah, Spectral Games. I don't think that they're going anywhere. A hit uh-huh. for a first game. I think that the longer it's out, too, I think the more popular it's gonna get. And I know I sound like a broken record. I know, but when co op drops, it's going to to be a whole second explosion as well of a of a whole new player base as well. So you all have the future is bright for Spectral Games in my eyes. Well, I'd invest in that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're one of the studios. If they were the stock market, yeah, I'd put it on there as, yeah, buy now because, you know, years from now it's going to be way too expensive to buy into that. Well, it's a crazy busy time in VR too. There's so many titles, great titles dropping. Mm-hmm. You know, Tropico on the MetaQuest, Contractor Showdown right around the corner. The other month there was, you know, Gosa Tabor, there's so many good titles coming out. So I think as the dust settles too, and it's like grim. Yeah, grim around the corner. <laughs> but I think as the year goes on, it's only going to get more popular. People are going to keep flipping through the titles and they're going to go medieval dynasty. Well, and this is also one you can go back to. Mm-hmm. It's not like a one and done. It's like, I, there's, dude, you could, you could play it for hours and then just restart if you needed to. It, so to me, there's never really going to be an end in my head as a mm-hmm. player. It's like, it's my dynasty. I don't need it to end as long as I can chop wood and hunt and talk to people. And now I'll be talking to people in real life while playing. Come on. Yeah. I think it's, so. it's, it's over delivered my expectations of what I had hoped it would. Yeah. And some great games to get... hear that. Great to hear that. Thank you. <laughs> no, congrats to you all. Uh, we'll let you go in a, in a moment too. You know, it's a, it's a Sunday for you all. It's, it's, you guys are like six hours ahead of us. So appreciate you taking the time on, on a weekend to to chat with us. But yeah, again, I think some games get really popular at release and then you don't really hear about it no, anymore. So just I think be the continual. I think medieval is just going to yeah. keep going up, you know, as of course, as new updates come around, but as more people get the chance to play, it's one of those games you go into and you're going to go, Holy shit. I was not expecting it to have. No, if you, if you so think you're depth. going in for a, a short term experience or some, mm-hmm. you know, it's no, this is legit. Like one of the most, if not the most in depth, uh-huh. feature game on and not kind of I mean I'll say there's a lot of different mechanics taking place in this like you mentioned every tree is choppable if it's <laughs> on the ground it can be picked up you can pick it up you've got the the water elements the reeds there is a the meat 
that you get the planks. It's it's amazing that this is playable on standalone. If this was a PC VR conversation, it would, you know, I'd expect it. But the fact that you can play this on a Quest 2. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, it's only going to get better, You guys too. are crazy. That's what I'm going to say. That is just a hell of an aggressive thing to take over. So uh, be, before we let you guys go, is there anything else you want to say to our listeners? Maybe let them know where they can find, you know, the Discord server and how to find you all on social media. Yeah. First of all, I want to thank all of our community for their help and engagement. They are really, really great. So thank you all. And who hasn't played it, give it a try and let us know what you think. Uh, you can find us at Spectral Games mostly. So at X, formerly known as Twitter, uh, the same at um, Facebook or Instagram and this port server. Gregor, please help me here out. <laughs> if you send me uh, the link too, I'll I'll throw yeah, the Discord yeah, server. Will do. Link. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll put the Discord server in our our uh, show notes, the episode description. Sometimes it nobody really remembers their Discord link. X Y seven four two. Exactly. So yeah. if if you want to join the Discord, check out the episode description, <laughs> the show notes. I want to have them both on again though down the road. Yeah, after like six these, months yeah, or when that I'm co-op thinking, mode's ready. Correct. After that hits and is released into the wild because mm-hmm. I'll be curious be great. What, else, what else can be discussed. Uh, I'm also curious about the future projects really bad. Yeah. The future is bright for special <laughs> games in <laughs> oh my, my eyes. Hopefully, uh, crushing it. I don't like to get into financials and stuff like that, but hopefully mm. everything greatly surpasses expectations and we see more VR projects from spectral games. Cause if this is a, uh, any indication of the potential of the studio, the future's bright, Dude. you know? So, Thank you again. Thank you, guys. Cool. Both of you, if if you enjoy the episode, uh, like I always like to say, subscribe, rate us five stars. But more importantly on this one, go check out Medieval Dynasty New Settlement on the Meta Quest. Won't be disappointed. No, drop them a five-star review. Check out their Discord for the latest updates. And we'll check you out next week. Ciao, ciao. Take care.